Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, uh, some exciting news from CRKT and Hogue. I get the Kaiser Mad Tonto and top designs, bottom dollar. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was about the uh, World War II uh, Medex Bolo, Corman's Bolo that my brother got me for Christmas and that I just received recently. He's uh, Jay McConnell, a, a gentleman junkie. Thank you, Jay. Says uh, that W uh, that World War II Bolo is too cool. Perfect condition, well used, but well loved. Clearly has a story. So thick at the spine. Must have been no fun to wield one handed. Trying support a wounded soldier in your off hand while bushwhacking your way to safety. That tool must have taken as much of a toll as it imparted. Uh, no doubt, Jay. And that's one of the things about that knife. I have the uh, Collins machete behind me and, and other uh, big heavy kit before this era of high-tech garbage that I love so much. You know, with all these light materials, light, strong materials, wicking fabrics and all that. Imagine, um, you know, it's only two generations ago uh, that the uh, men fighting in the South Pacific, for instance, were laden down with all of this heavy equipment. And the equipment uh, was necessary, uh, you know, for the corpsman to get through the jungle uh, with his wounded with his wounded Marine. Um, so it just makes me proud that that's uh, those are the people that were descended from. It also is a uh, you know, you you pick up one of these knives and you wonder, could I have hacked it? Uh, pun intended uh, in in the South Pacific. You know, uh, so yeah, the stories abound in these knives, and that's that's part of why I really love this hobby. So Jay McConnell and everyone else who comments and participates, uh, thank you so much. And and uh, you know, sometimes I will feature negative comments because sometimes the negative comments are actually positive. Uh, they actually uh, make me think about something differently. Other times it's just sniping, and and that doesn't happen much, which I love. I don't. There's not too much of that stuff in the knife world. So uh, I guess I, I picked the right hobby and the right place to do a podcast. All right. So all that being said, I'm going to put this beautiful Corman's machete to the side and say that now it's time for a pocket check. Uh, sort of on theme with today's show, uh, recently I've been carrying... Uh, out of guilt, carrying knives that I've bought because I think they're interesting, but uh, don't quite make it into my pocket because I have fancier stuff to put in there because I'm a fancy guy, you know, and I don't want to be caught without a fancy knife. Uh, and lately I've been thinking about how fancy some of these inexpensive knives are and how great they are. And um, uh, so that I have them, I should either sell them or carry them as, as my grandparents generation would say, crap or get off the pot. So it's time to do one of those two. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. So in my pocket, I had the new Civivi or the Sencut Watauga. Now this is uh, not so new. This was introduced first at Blade Show 2022. And uh, I remember seeing it uh, featured on Stasa 23's channel and saying, I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, now it's out in, uh, in general circulation and it comes in a number of different flavors. This is my favorite, this dark green uh, micarta with the black blade. Uh, it's very thin, very slicey, has a beautiful profile. I love that blade shape with a really effective thumb swell on the spine um, with very nice jimping. This is a $40 knife, I believe. Um, so inexpensive. I, I could have that wrong, actually, because uh, I've I've gotten a few things recently that are all kind of in a in that price range. So 60 to 40 bucks, we'll say, is this Send Cut. But what I think that's the whole point of Send Cut is to make them somewhat inexpensive. Um, so that if you like Wii designs, if you like Civivi builds, uh, you'll you'll come for 
a send cut. And that's where they're willing to take design chances, by the way, in these inexpensive, um, more inexpensive knives. Uh, that's what I find. And every once in a while, like uh, some of the uh, limited edition Wii's we've been talking about, and we'll talk about another one today, they're, they're doing some really nice stuff, but not taking design chances as much. Uh, so I'm glad that there is send cut and I'm glad that there is Civivi to, uh, to broaden out that, um, range plus Sencut just released their first knife uh with a big time designer it's ray laconico i think or civivi yeah that ray laconico uh that everyone's raving about so cool things happening there uh so i had that in my front right pocket i also had uh, in my front right pocket i've been doing that too carrying a my slip joint in the same pocket as my uh as my main uh but the beautiful javelina jack that's the february 2023 jack wolf knife and it's a sow belly single bladed sow belly and that beautiful clip point the, the cool thing about the sow belly knives the cool thing about the single bladed knives that ben belkin has been designing is that you really get to um as my daughter would say, vibe with the ergonomics you don't have the spine of another blade nestled in that handle to disrupt the the ergonomics to obscure the the full ergonomics for your hand so i love these knives and i've always had a thing for the sow belly uh, though i only have one and it's a, it's a very nice uh, rough rider and uh, some people might think that that's a contradiction in terms but it's not and uh it's a very nice uh feeling knife but it's got a big old spay blade tucked in there or or the clip point you can never you're never using it without a blade folded in there so you don't get the full benefit of the ergos so i love this javelina jack thank you ben belkin for for gracing me and this channel with that gorgeous uh slip joint knife all right uh next up speaking of gorgeous oh gorgeous uh the nova one the nova one by the way pre-order is now open this is my um, this is my collaboration knife with, uh, with Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. You know Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. He's been on the show a bunch of times. And uh, also, I rave about his Tonto and his Ruffian and, uh, that I carry all the time. Carried all the time before we made this Nova One. Now I'm stuck on the Nova One for obvious reasons. But I came to him. I said, I said Matt, baby, uh, I love your Tonto. Uh, I love the platform. It's great. Uh, Let's do lunch. Let's talk about a collaboration. Uh, of course, none of that happened. I just said, hey, Matt, I'd love to design a Bowie blade to fit on the Tonto handle. Can we do that and then make some for other people if they're interested? He said, hell yes. So I think it's a, the perfect size for EDC fixed blade. And uh, I do love a Bowie. been going through that Bowie phase. So I designed this and he executed it beautifully perfectly i also am able to incorporate a little bit of my love for the recurve there without being obnoxious i know a lot of people do not like recurves but this is one of those recurves you put on like you might on a slip joint knife where you're expecting to use it have it in your pocket for years and years and years sharpen and sharpen you put a little extra on the belly which gives you a recurved edge so that as you sharpen you sharpen through that belly because that's where you're going to be cutting the most uh, so you don't get a deformed blade over time. It just sort of settles into a straight edge instead of a uh, recurve. So that's the whole point behind uh, doing this hollow ground 154 cm blade with that uh, with that slight recurve. Very very thin behind the edge, very sharp and cutty, but also nice and stabby. Uh, it has a good um, tip here. You can see the swedge. The swedge comes in and at the tip, it's basically a dagger tip minus the sharp edge uh, because that swedge comes in and meets the, the tip, the cutting tip. Uh, so had that on me, uh, by the way, this is a prototype. Uh, how it will change is it will have different colored liners, but the same colored maroon handles. That row, uh, one inch row of jimping will now be forward for the thumb. Um, and then my logo will be quite a bit smaller to fit on the flat of this side of the blade. So that's the Nova one in my waistband. And then for emotional support today, I had another charming little Bowie that I haven't carried in a long time, uh, which is the Finch Knife Company Drifter. In uh, So this is a very small, but God, is that a handsome knife? And it seems like it would make a very cool, large fixed blade too. It's got a coffin shaped handle with that beautiful wood. And then as always, 
uh, the Finch um, badge. I guess not as always. I, I think I've seen one recently where they haven't, where they didn't put that on there. Uh, but the really nice uh, luminescent badge with the F and then the low profile QSP style flipper, or I don't know if it's a Finch flipper, that QSP. I think that's how it worked. Um, and then the long, well, it's not long. It's short, but it looks long because of the sinuous nature of this. It looks like a Musso Bowie, a uh, Musso Bowie folder. So uh, just a gorgeous little flipper. Feels great in the hand, has good jimping, has a nice thickness. That's something I rave about on small knives. Has to have a nice thickness to, to uh, feel like you have a good purchase on it. Uh, excellent action. Love the wood handle. Uh, this I've seen in the canvas micarta. A blue blue jean micarta and, and and some other things, but I think it really uh, expresses itself best in wood. All right, that's what I was carrying on me. Four knives, as usual, one for emotional support, uh, one fixed blade, one slip joint, and one main front pocket modern folder. What did you have on you? Let me know. Uh, just drop that in the comment section below. And uh, before I move on to... Uh, uh, knife life news i just do want to remind you that the nova one I, I have it on my list so i have to say it the nova one pre-order is live go to the knife junkie.com slash nova one and uh you will uh see the story behind the nova one because everything has to have a story today you can't even buy a razor blade for your face without seeing some guy say my face used to get chapped so i made this razor uh, I know I know people don't care, but go check out the story behind this. You do care about this. And uh, if you're interested, if you want uh, a really excellent EDC Bowie, 100% handmade by Matt Chase uh, in Massachusetts. Well, he does have the blanks water jetted out. And then after that, everything, including the bevel, is hand done. And he doesn't even use a jig, which is kind of impressive. Uh, but not necessary, but impressive. Uh, very cool. So please go check that out if interested. And you too could walk around with your very own Nova One. Now, just in case you wanted to know, Nova One uh, refers to the area in which uh, I hail, from which I hail as well as Jim. So there's an interesting story behind that. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at CRKT and Hogue. An interesting and exciting little tidbit of news there and some exciting uh, releases from Boker Plus right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So this first story in uh, Knife Life News is uh, sort of an add-on. So a couple of weeks back, we talked about the exciting news that CRKT was releasing a, a pair of knives made in the United States and uh, both des uh, designed by the Lurches. Uh, Matthew Lurch designed one called the LCBK, and his wife, MJ, designed one called the Definitive. Well, we just found out that they were made by Hogue Knives, and uh, what a perfect what a perfect place to have uh, knives OEM'd. Now, uh, I, I didn't really quite think about it this way, but uh, reading the article on, um, on Knife News, uh, you, you have Jim Bruins, who's the president of Hogue Knives, who, by the way, has been on the show. Very interesting guy. Great conversation. Um, and uh, what, what show is that? Uh, well, I'll get to it. I'll find it. Um, oh, number 47. He was on number 47. Anyway, uh, he said about this partnership with CRKT, today we manufacture knives in collaboration with major firearm brands such as Sig Sauer and Heckler and & Koch, or is that Coke? I'm not sure. And feature designs with key industry names like Boker, uh, Voxnez, Kyle Lamb. And he says, this partnership with CRKT is a natural extension for our business. And, and I dare say a, uh, a, a great one, and I hope it's something that CRKT uh, continues. I know that they plan on continuing this partnership, but maybe in seeing one of their 
uh, one of their fellow American companies actually doing the manufacturing here, how great would it be if they leveraged some of their size, power, and strength and influence to start doing that themselves in the United States? It almost seems to me like a giant company like CRKT, relatively giant, you know, uh, should have an easier time setting up manufacturing in the United States than a smaller spot. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a uh, you know manufacturer, but it seems like that should be logical. So this whole thing is exciting to me because a it's uh, something I've been talking about forever. CRKT just needs to up their materials and make stuff in the states because um, they have all these great designers on board, always doing these interesting things. So it's exciting for that reason, but it's also exciting to think that maybe they can be influenced by Hogue and 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 see that maybe they don't need to be spending money with Hogue. Maybe they spend money in their own infrastructure and build up a factory and or 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 use the factory they have and start making stuff here. So anyway, uh, I think that that could be a really uh, exciting thing. I got one quote I want to read from uh, from Doug Flag. Uh, he's the uh, VP of Marketing and Innovation at CRKT. He said. Uh, we've known the team at Hogue for quite some time, and their sterling reputation in the marketplace is well-deserved. Uh, so as we look forward towards partnerships in U.S. manufacturing, they were the obvious fit. So yeah, I think so too. I'd love to see more. Uh, I'd love to see Hogue doing more um, OEM stuff because uh, with the Ritter RSK Mark I and their own uh, tools and knives, they do great stuff. And those Alan Elishowitz designs, they do great stuff. So I'm excited about that. All right. Next up, uh, Boker Knives is releasing a new Brad Zinker. You know, Brad Zinker, the designer of the Urban Trapper, one of the one of the biggies for Boker that they put through a lot of different iterations. Beautiful, slender, uh, little modern flipper gentleman's knife. Well, he's coming out with a modernized version of the Barlow. Uh, which I just think this is beautiful. Uh, this is available right now, by the way. I, I said he's coming out with, but Boker has already come out with his design. A, a beautiful modern front flipper version of the um, of the uh, Barlow. M390 blade steel, that's a tie bolster. It comes in marbled carbon fiber or cocobolo. God, I love cocobolo. And uh, that's a, a sculpted titanium pocket clip. Uh, that can go either way, which is great because uh, that's a trend we're starting to see. And I, I like that. Uh, 2.3 ounces available right now. A classy bit of gentleman's cutlery. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, I'm wondering how it, it uh, carries in the light pants, uh, like suit pants, like uh, the Brad Zinker Urban Trapper was pretty awesome for that. Anyway, looking forward to that. That's the Boker Flipper Urban Barlow. Uh, also from Boker, actually, uh, Salmonero. They have a new one coming out with Salmonero, and that's part of their collection series. Now, uh, Boker every year has, a uh, Boker Plus every year announces in January, the beginning of the year, the collection series knife of the year. And it's a fancy uh, version of a, of a designer collaboration knife. And this year, it's with Salmonero. And uh, we've seen a bunch of his stuff over the years. Um, I think he's done a number of knives with Boker, actually. Uh, his custom um, custom folders are quite coveted. And he's also a really nice guy. I, I tried to get him on the show before, and I think I'm going to try again. We've had some um, back and forth. Uh, and he just seems like a really great guy. But anyway, his designs are intricate, intricately milled, and, uh, and usually... Uh, very sturdily built uh, so that they are kind of dazzling work knives. So here you have um, a, an Italian OEM. They're not sure who that is, uh, but a 3.4 inch Magna Cut. Now, the big question will be, how do they heat treat their Magna Cut? Now, uh, many companies have been heat treating their Magna Cut way low. I mean, you it, you want it around 63, according to uh, my trusted voices, uh, 63, and they've been coming it in lower because it's cheaper to grind it uh, when it's at a lower and less hard um, uh, Rockwell hardness. But the whole point of the stuff is that you can get it really hard, and but it's also uh, maintains some of the qualities of a of a uh, you know of a less rigid steel, and uh, and that's where I'm going to stop trying to talk about Magna Cut. But that'll be the big question: How do they heat treat the Magna Cut? It's got a cool angled thumb stud. Salmonaro is known for that. Uh, Timascus pivot collar, uh, sculpted reversible pocket clip, 
and uh, a it comes in at 5.19 ounces. For a lot of people, that'll seem heavy, uh, but not to me. A beautiful knife, Salmon Arrow. Uh, Want to get him on the show. Uh, lastly, in Knife Life news, uh, we have another limited edition collaboration between we and Anton Chichenko. Uh, Kuchenko, sorry. So last week we talked about the, um, what was it, the Murata? Or no, this one is the Murata. The la last week it was the, mm, what was it? Well, I can't remember what the last one was called, but uh, <laughs> it was a very different looking knife. To me, this looks like kind of like the 460, not the 460. This looks a bit like the, uh, yeah, the 460 by ZT and, um, and Sinkovich. It's an upswept kind of Persian -y blade, beautifully swedged. Um, this to me is way better looking than the other one from last week, which forgive me, I just cannot remember the name of. Uh, oh, Parada. Uh, no, the Makani. That was the one last week. Makani. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger than that. The Makani has this kind of awkward, awkwardly fullered, um, sort of awkwardly shaped uh, uh, kind of bellied worn cliff. Uh, that just did not work for my eye, but this one certainly does, except for this version that Jim just put up on screen. I mean, this has major Mr. Furley issues. You've got um, an inlay of beautiful fat carbon, which would be enough, but it's inlaid into a, uh, a sort of flame pattern anodized titanium uh, handle, uh, sort of asymmetrically, and then it's got this crazy, what's it, it, it's called a, Heims Heims Kringla Heims Kringa pattern damasteel just crazy looking just too many patterns too many notes uh but a beautiful uh profile I love the the look of the knife so I'm excited about this because uh, just before I was sort of uh calling we a little bit boring because it's the the higher end uh version uh or the higher end company there and they have more to lose but I don't know I think this is beautiful in this version as Jim has it on screen. Uh, so check it out. It, this is the Murata. No, the Makani. Oh, Manaja. Wait, whoa. We Knife and Chichenko team up. I'm reading the screen for the Murata. Okay. The one last week was the Makani. This, by the way, is bigger. So clear as mud, 4.6 ounces, uh, limited to about 300 per version. All right. I got to end Life Knife News right now here let's go on and uh before we do let me just say i don't know if you will but after, after that little diatribe but if you think it's interesting here and you want to help support us go to the knifejunkie.com slash patreon and check out the extra things you get i just did an interview yesterday with well this past week and had such a great extra bit of conversation after the interview uh that you get as a patron and uh it was awesome so anyway Check it out. It might be interesting to you. Uh, so that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'll repeat that complex address. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So if you've watched this show for any period of time uh, and are interested in the kind of stuff we have on this show, I'm sure you know Tier 1 Gear Reviews, Justin over there. He's an awesome guy. He's always been very generous with me over the years, loaning me knives and and uh, exposing me to, um, to many new um, uh, custom makers and, and stuff like that. And he has been designing his own knives. I showed the scythe uh, fixed blade knives that he had made with old squirrel knives a little while back well this is the prototype to his shield and made scythe folder so check this out this is a folding pical uh, made by shield and knives this is in the prototype phase and i would say they are pretty close uh it is here let me read you first of all what what he says 
uh, in a little note he sent to me. Ultimately, our main goal with this project was to introduce a budget pick haul folder to the market, something that doesn't really exist, sadly, without slacking on quality of materials in the process, which Shielden did a great job considering it was something they had never done before. Hopefully, once these make their debut, it will allow more people to experience just how cool and useful the Pakal style really is. Of course, it's not meant to be a workhorse by any means or to replace your favorite banger. Ultimately, it's just something that's meant to be small, lightweight, fast, and super concealable that will get you out of a pinch. Make no mistake, though, it's a dangerous little bastard, and I definitely wouldn't want to be on the business end of it. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, this will be $60 to $70, 154 CM blade steel stonewashed black micarta, polished black micarta, nested stainless liners, cage ceramics, uh, ceramic bearings. And then the, uh, the, the final version will have a wire clip. This was sort of an off the shelf clip that they put on for the prototype, which to me is actually not too bad, but I, I think a wire clip will feel way better in hand. Um, so yeah, this is very cool. Uh, he said that they are planning on doing a an XL version of it. This one, I have medium sized hands. This one is fits just in my hand and gives me a spot to put my thumb, so it's not coming out of my hand. And then, good luck disarming this. You know, it's just there's nothing to grab onto on the non business end, so it will be very hard to disarm this. Um, so very beautiful, very cool knife. Uh, I just want to show it real quickly with the only other folding Pikals in my collection. Here it is with the Seminole uh, Elvia by Emerson. And uh, it looks much bigger. And then here it is with the Pinkerton designed inversion. So uh, yeah, fits fits really nicely in the hand. It's a small little pinch getter router and i love it <laughs> nicely done justin and and yeah shielding knocked it out of the park very nicely done uh in the construction and and i love the polished micarta it's got a nice feel to it all right next up something i was really excited uh when i saw and i may have uh, i know we did a story on it two weeks ago i guess uh but kaiser has just released their uh mad tanto the um a collaboration with damned designs and it is exquisite i am really really happy with this um so last year i had four models by uh, damn designs come across my desk i was very impressed with the sort of thin but broadly shaped handle uh and it the handles were very similar the blades were were different and and a part of it, you know, really for me was was the ergonomics were so great. Um, but also, you know me, uh, shallow fella, it, they also just look great. And then how do they work? Oh, yeah, a knife is meant to cut too. Man alive. This one right here is super thin behind the edge. I don't know how to measure. The, not that I don't know how to measure. I haven't measured it, it yet, but I don't know. It, it is so sharp. It is so thin, uh, that hollow ground uh, blade there that it's incredibly impressive um so anyway i've been carrying this quite a bit uh over the last three days well it's been in my pocket full time over the last three days um uh, in one way or another and i'm digging it it's got a great um button lock the button sits proud pretty proud in that handle um unlike say the uh what is it the um Unlike the raccoon by Vosteed, where you kind of have to dig your thumb in there, this one sits proud and is easy to to uh, do lefty also, uh, you know, to, to pinch in there with your with your forefinger. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, that that is a one sided clip, deep carry pocket clip. A uh, little bit off the shelf on that pocket clip, but I don't care uh, if it keeps the cost within reason. You've got a, a sort of um, ceremonial lanyard uh, accommodation there but yeah good luck trying to fish a piece of paracord in and out of that uh without taking it apart um but that tanto blade just gorgeous drop point tanto blade keeping that point right down the center line so you always kind of know where that point is it's not a trailing point it's not it's not a low um low slung point uh but it's got that drop to it that that gives it 
you know, that overall arc on the spine puts that tip right where you want it. And this flat portion here is so sharp too. Man, I'm very impressed with this knife. That's 154 CM. Adrian D'Souza, the designer of this, was on episode 268. Go to theknifejunkie.com 268 if you want to hear, uh, well, his whole philosophy about designing knives and how he, how he um, uh, produced and released them. So very, very cool. Uh, so that's the Kaiser Mad Tonto. Uh, next up, I got two of these um, from Dirk Pinkerton himself. He's, he was uh, getting rid of a couple of, uh, not a couple, a number of prototypes from designs he'd created over, over the past uh, uh, number of years and uh, that he had laying around, I guess had no use for. It. So I picked up a couple and uh, those are two of them here are the, we are the mini proponent. Uh, so this is the first one I saw. I was like, oh, I love the, um, what do you call that? Burlap micarta. So I got this and then and then after a while, I saw that there was also a maroon micarta version. So I grabbed that. I mean, he was giving me a screaming deal on these. So it was no big deal to just pick up another one. But I'm glad I did get this one because look at the action on this one. You know, not what we know from Artisan, not what we know from Pinkerton, you know, not what we know from caged bear bearings and all that. So uh, just a weak D10 on this one and um, a lock stick and just not a great example, but a prototype. So, um, you know, it's cool to have A and B when it's open, it works great. You know, knives are not just about opening and closing them, <laughs> right? They're not just about action. But that said, I'm glad I did get this one because A, maroon linen micarta and B, great action. Uh, so you get great snapping action on this, on this, uh, artisan you got the beautiful pinkerton design that awesome uh warncliffe blade is really sharp even though it comes to a bit of a wedgy um i said wedgy even though it comes to a wedge like uh behind the edge geometry it's very sharp and works great and then lastly in this uh in this bit of pinkerton pickup here i got this i oh, love this thing Oh, not this one. Wrong one. Sorry. This one, the titanium, the asymmetrical version of the night horse. Uh, you know, I've been talking about the night horse by beyond EDC quite a bit because it is a beautiful modern Navaja. My favorite, you know, one of my favorite all time knives of history. The big Spanish folder with that Spanish clip point blade and that exotic edge shape. And the horn-shaped handle, just beautiful. And, man, I got a great deal on this. This is one that uh, I've been sort of vacillating on. 150 bucks is already an outstanding deal for this. S35VN, uh, amazing grind, very nice uh, uh, milled titanium handle. 150 bucks is a screaming deal anyway. Uh, but I had dropped my $30 version and broken the tip, which I later repaired. And I thought, well, why should I do that with the titanium version? Uh, but really, it is worth it. I got it. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm just glad I, I was offered a deal on it um, and picked it up because it would be worth getting the, it for 150 bucks. I, I kind of wish I already had because it also comes in anodized blue and anodized bronze. Besides this, um, this very nice sort of just raw titanium look. Awesome knife. So excited about this. And there you have it. That is... Uh, the new stuff coming through my across my desk recently. Uh, I do want to make that uh, Justin's tier one scythe my own one of these days. I will be getting on the pre order for that for sure. All right. Top designs, bottom dollar. Remember, bet your bottom dollar, you'll lose the blues in Chicago. Well, your bottom dollar is your last dollar. And uh, this lineup here represents to me some of the best design you can get for uh the smallest amount uh this whether it's from designers uh allowing their designs to come within reach by doing production runs with companies making affordable knives or companies making affordable knives that just have some on point in-house um design and that's that this is the the first one is an example of that and it is the Sencut Bronte. 
This knife looks like a Tao, a, uh, a sort of a Chinese sword. It's a worn cliff with that with a nice downward raked belly, very very gradual belly. That tip is right below uh, the knuckle, right right below the bottom of the handle, so you get serious utility there. It's very nice and thin, and then it's just a good looker. Uh, good looker with a fuller meaning you can get fidgety with it. Uh, do you like fidgety knives? Uh, a lot of us do. So this does have great action. It is a front flipper and a really good one at that. I am left, you know, doing it with my left hand right now, which is not as good, but it has outstanding action. Let me see if I can do it like this with my forefinger. I can't do that with any knife with my forefinger. Uh, but extremely neutral ergonomics. As you can see, the handle ergonomics are basically two parallel lines, and it feels comfortable, obviously, in any grip. A deep carry pocket clip. Uh, this is um, this is 9CR, 18 MOV, and a very good blade steel uh, for the money. This is a $40 knife. Comes in a number of different uh, uh, color flavors. I love this blasted gray and uh, green micarta. And that micarta uh, has recently been somewhat cleaned, though it doesn't look like it. Okay, next up, uh, this is, uh, talk about top design, bottom dollar. This is the $80 Tempest Knives Pinion. And I, I just fell for this knife um, upon receiving the prototype uh, before the, the big run of these, uh, I don't know, six months ago. And I just fell in love with it. And the design and the and the action and the cutting is just outstanding with this knife. This was designed by KC Spirion of uh, the uh, Knives Fast channel. Great guy. We all know and love KC. And we've also been watching him design knives. And his first one, the Mach 51, was, was really nice, extravagant uh, frame lock folder in uh, titanium and S... I can't remember what the steel was. Beautiful. And then his first production knife that went into production was this pinion. And then he's got the uh, microburst on the way. You've seen me talk about the microburst recently. I will be getting that one as well because that that blade cuts amazingly. Uh, this one reminds me a bit of, the, of a good looking 940. <laughs> you know, people, uh, I don't I'm not a big fan of the 940, but this has that uh, the blade shape that evokes the 940. But really, to me does it right. Now, I am not in any way um, trying to to diss the, the late and the great who designed it, but uh, I am, the, the 940 that is, it's just not my favorite of his designs. Uh, this, however, is of, of Casey's. So this can be had on his website, I believe, Tempest Knives for about 80 bucks. Uh, and it comes in different handles. Uh, he recently released it in a neutral, you know, um, G10, what do you call that? JG10. So you can dye that any color and uh, and make it your own. Say maroon would be nice. Okay, next up, this is actually uh, also from a uh, a friend of the knife world, a a, a a stalwart of the knife world. This is from uh, Orion Knives. This is the Scorpio, and Orion Knives is David Cam's. Um, company david cam you know him as blade banter and also the um organizer of the apex pass around group he has his finger on the pulse of the knife world for real i mean he has all of the new knives come through his hands and he distributes them as well as representing uh a a company as well as um his own company and his own designs uh, this one is exciting to me because it's a, yes it's a clip point it's a bowie but it's got some really uh, great features. First of all, for a small knife, uh, where you where you pretty much rely on the choil for a full grip, um, it's got the thickness I've been talking about, and I I am down with the thickness. It's it is uh, keeps that blade from twisting in your hand when doing hard work, but it allows you if the knife is robust in build to do hard work with a small knife. This one has a really nice crowned spine on the blade. Feels very comfortable without jimping there. But the jimping is on the clip for this kind of utility. And I love it. I love it. And also um, something David Cam mentioned uh, that when you use the jimping up here on the clip, you can also gauge your depth of cut. If you're cutting through boxes and you don't want to damage what's in there, 
you can uh, kind of lock into a, a depth with that jimping and keep it there. And also, it looks cool. <laughs> uh, canvas micarta, nice um, anodized aluminum backspacer and pivot collar. And I suspect uh, much like, oh, and great flipping button lock action. And by the way, David Cam was one of the first that I ever noticed doing the button lock flipper. Uh, I do know that the Mordax, at the point that he designed the um, the Solaris, uh, his first knife, the only one I remember doing this was the um, was the Mordax, the the Ferrum Forge designed drop knife made by Protec. This was even before the Malibu, I think. I think, but uh, David Cam was one of the very early adopters of um, of the flipper button lock, and he really nailed it with the geometry. Um, putting that flipper where it is uh, compared to that. We talk about that a lot on, uh, on our podcast when he came on and talked uh, uh, on here recently. Uh, okay, so very, very great and comfortable knife. I do recommend this, uh, the Scorpio. What I was trying to say, and I lost track of my thoughts, was he will go the Solaris route and offer all of these extras that you can customize your Scorpio with like different handle scales, uh, different, you know, clips and pivot collars and, uh, and backspacers. Sorry for the senior moment there. Okay. Next up, this one is a, a $60 version. You can also get a hundred dollar version of this beautiful knife from Ray Laconico and artisan cutlery. This is the serious. And yes, I am. I love the neutral ergonomics on this and the absolutely classic beautiful look to that drop point blade. Um, this is one that I, I might give to my brother only because he wears a suit. You know, he's got a, he's got a, a job, fancy pants job where he's got to wear his fancy pants. And this would be perfect. I know he carries his, his Demco, uh, 80, 20.5. And that's awesome. Uh, great for suit carry because it's nice and light and thin, but this also looks the part, right? It look kind of looks dressy. Um, you know, you can't quite do all the work you, you could probably do with the 8020.5, but this is no slouch. Uh, this is ARRPM9. That's the proprietary um, metal uh, powder metallurgy steel from Artisan Cutlery. You can get it with S35VN and Maroon Micarta, which, which I should have gotten, but I sort of knew I wasn't going to carry it much, but I wanted this design because I just love it. And I don't have any Ray Laconicos. And this, like I said, was very within reach at $60. Um, also, you see that fuller in the handle? It might not look it, but it feels so good when you wrap your hand around and your, and your fingers just nestle in there. Um, so that's just a slight detail, but I really like fullering in blade handles. And you're going to see that in this next one, uh, which is made by Concept. Um, concept, a knife company that was started by some washouts from Kaiser. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know if they were washouts, but guys who were at Kaiser and they, and they left to start this awesome company. I love concept. And, uh, this has the fullering handles here. And one thing that I love about concept that I also appreciate about artisan and all these other companies is that they work with, uh, custom knife makers and designers. And this is from, this is a collaboration with French knife maker, uh, Jonathan Renaudin, who goes as K Max Rom. And now I was following following K Max Rom on Instagram for about eight or nine years before he started collaborating with Kaiser and then with Concept on his beautiful knives. Um, most of them have that double peak, whether they're Bowie or Tonto, and and that thumb swale. And um, and I got hooked on his designs. Um, his fixed blade designs. They're just beautiful. And then you'd have these crazy sheaths made by this company in France called Pyrenees Kydex, I think. And the whole package was beautiful and dazzling and also kind of tactical, but also um, just, you know, eye candy and, and uh, you know, jewelry, if you will, uh, cutlery, cutlery jewelry. So anyway, he, he started designing knives for for the uh, production folder companies. And this, to me, the pret a which means ready for anything in French, is the uh, pinnacle so far of his designs. Now, he did the uh, Pelican, which is his, his signature knife for years, the Pelican. He did uh, two versions of that, uh, one Warncliffe or Sheep's Foot, 
and one Tonto, also with uh, Concept. I have that. It's a frame lock, great little knife. But this one is bigger and and ergo better. And they also make a titanium version of this. Uh, that's the first one that came out. Really nice. I uh, sold it to my buddy Will B, and he's been reporting back that it's doing beautifully. And and I <laughs> I love it. I love that knife. Kind of wish I didn't get rid of it, but don't I always say that? But so Concept is really, really, really capable of making knives on all levels. And they do some really dressed up stuff, some dressed down stuff. And that's what I love. Uh, I ended up keeping the inexpensive version, the $60 version of the Preta 2. Something about the execution of this really does it for me. Uh, but if you love titanium frame locks and love this design, uh, definitely check out the full size titanium version. Okay, next up, this is a case of in-house design, uh, but this is a one-man shop, and that is uh, uh, off-grid knives. I mean, one one-man shop in terms of design team. Of course, he has these knives manufactured by Best Tech and by a manufacturer in Taiwan. Uh, but this is the Raptor, uh, and the off-grid Raptor. And when I first saw this knife, uh, I I did think like. Oh, that is a design that he's making just to be audacious, just to look different, you know. And um, and then when I got it in hand, because honestly, this is not a knife I would have bought, but he sent me one. And well, he sent me two. <laughs> he sent me a black one and then later this one. And uh, but after getting that that initial black one, I was I was kind of looking to disprove its usefulness and in doing so discovered how incredibly useful this weird looking blade is uh it looks like a recurve tanto but the recurve is at the front where we don't usually see it or it looks like a a, a worn cliff in the demarco household that has been dropped on concrete and the front has been chipped off but that little recurve up front gives such amazing offers such amazing utility because it's giving you uh, the 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 utility of a recurve and a hawkbill, but also the point placement of a hawkbill or a worn cliff. So you get great you get great use out of that um, curved tip front portion, and then this two and a half inch or so run of of straight here. This is one fifty. Uh, this is D two of straight D two is really thin behind the edge and really sharp. So that's that's one of the things that I always note about off-grid knives is how very thin they are behind the edge and how very well they cut. The Stinger XL is the one knife that's a saber ground that is that does not get extremely thin like this behind the edge, but it still cuts amazingly. It's just these are my go-to cardboard. If I have to go through a lot of car cardboard, uh, like around Christmas time or like around Ikea time or something like that. These off-grid knives are the ones I pull out. Uh, but this one, this just the design is just so bizarre uh, and so interesting that it had to make this list of high design bottom dollar because these are, uh, depending on the, I believe, depending on the finish, but these are all under a hundred bucks, like well, behind, like around the 60 to $75 mark. And to me, that is endless utility for a really cool looking design. And uh, by the way, they uh, changed the pocket clip on this version of it. I, I like it better, a little nicer looking and uh, deep, uh, you know, uh, put it in a little socket with flat screws. All right. Next up, this is a Dylan Mallory design, and I love Dylan Mallory's designs. This is the Hadros, a, a an absolutely gorgeous Warncliffe, thinly ground and uh, and very uh, like fifty dollars when I got this. This was fifty dollars. No, this one was, yeah, this was fifty dollars when I got it. Um, that Sen cut was forty. Um, just a beautiful knife. You you've got some of the signature features of. Uh, a Dylan Mallory design, uh, that thin handle, which uh, has changed actually over time, but this was kind of an early signature um, at, at that thin sort of arced handle. You have a really nice, long, slender Warncliffe with a deep, deep hollow grind. So it's very, very thin, um, but it's got a decent uh, stock to it. And the tip is, uh, you might think from the side, it's going to be 
a pretty weak tip. But if you look at it from the top, it maintains a bit of its thickness pretty much to the tip. And I think that that has something to do with it being hollow ground. I don't know quite how. Yeah. I mean, it does thin out at the very tip, but you get a nice uh, a nice point there. You get a nice thin edge and you get uh, a handle that just melts into the hand. The jimping is very nice. And I've always contested. Well, it's not a content. I've always contended. Is that the right word? I've always said that this knife would be great uh, in reverse uh, pick hall style. If you needed to if you needed to turn this into a self-defense implement, this would be a great one because that thin handle uh, allows you to wrap your fingers around and, and it's, it's, um, it's not that neutral, but it's thin enough that it, if you can make it so, and, um, and that blade is just great for that sort of gross motor motion. And you'd be going against the stop bar. So you wouldn't have to be worrying uh, much. So a great, great knife. It comes in um, this nice olive drab. I like the color of this uh, olive micarta, but it comes in G10s, and I believe they have this in wood, the Hadros, uh, designed by Dylan Mallory. This next one is uh, designed by uh, Matt Degnan, and he's got some cool designs out there, but this this is the Roach, and this is the early version of the Roach. They've come out with uh, the Roach in Micarta and different blade steels at this point. This is in 154 CM. And uh, this is from the Kaiser Vanguard series. I'm not sure if they do that anymore. Um, but this was from when they did do the Vanguard series. Uh, you've got this really nice, very high height flat grind on a relatively thin blade. So this is wickedly sharp. I mean, this has received a lot of, this has done a lot of work. Um, here you can see it kind of marring the finish of the blade, that gray wash, very ergonomically, um, dictative, <laughs> authoritative, your, your hands, um, are, are forced into a couple of positions with this. Uh, this, this part is always stuck in my craw a little bit. Uh, I, I wish they kind of didn't have this little pinky partition. It really does force your pinky and then kind of forces my hand a little bit further away from from the flipper. I'd rather be a little bit further up. But anyway, it does that. But this in uh, when you use the choil, this thing is just amazing. Uh, it's a great cutter. It is a great uh, it's got point down the center line. This would make a great uh, sort of tactical last ditch tactical knife. People never talk about this knife that way. But it reminds me a lot of the barong over my shoulder that leaf shaped blade with uh, a, a center line point. Um, yeah. So great, great knife. And then you can get this now in the mini version in uh, a, a couple of flavors of micarta and a removable thumb stud and a, and a hole. So very cool. They're just doing cool stuff with this, this design. Also deep carry pocket clip. This is the old pocket clip. It's got the cucaracha on there. I love that. I love it. That's the only way I prefer. Uh, let's see. All right. Can you see it? That's the only way I prefer to see a cockroach. Cockroaches are powerful creatures. They actually uh, disavowed me of my arachnophobia when I moved to Philadelphia back in my 20s and started experiencing cockroaches. I was like, I'll bring the wolf spiders, man. Bring those wolf spiders. All right. Next up, a similar uh, blade reminds me of a barong as well. And that is the Nightshade from Vosteed. Vosteed, a, a, a company that just kind of came out of nowhere with their, uh, first for me with their kitchen knives, the Morgan eight inch uh, chef's knife is a knife they sent me that is incredible. It was our favorite knife until I got the Steve Kalari custom knife in the house, uh, but just a great, great knife. And, uh, and they were making folders and I asked, can you send me a folder? And they sent me, uh, they've sent me a few of them. Uh, uh, which I'm grateful for. Uh, but this one is the knockout of the bunch to me in terms of design. Um, now the Bellamy, you get better materials for a, a relatively uh, amazing cost. But this one, look at that design. And, and I would imagine that it's a polarizing design. I haven't heard anyone uh, uh, give this the stink eye, but, but I could tell, you know, I can imagine some people would not like the look of this. It reminds me of the Bob Lum Chinese knife, I think it's called. 
that he made a folder that he did with Spyderco years ago. Uh, but it's got that sort of um, not quite open yet look with the with the downward uh, raking uh, blade. But I love that. So if you look at the blade itself, it's pretty much a spear point. It's pretty much a symmetrical leaf shaped spear point. But they put it on a sort of pistol grip axis. So you get uh, you get a number of benefits out of this. First of all, when you're doing this kind of cutting, like like pull cutting, you have the tip down down low below the center line so it's easy to get to the tip for pull cuts and then you have that wide belly uh so you get you get the the benefit of the recurve portion of the belly not the recurve but the triangle where you're pulling material in and then you get the outward sort of slashing um upswept uh, benefit of the belly on the on the other side so a very efficient blade is what i'm getting at but also you can use it in reverse grip you imagine cutting straps or or um rope this way uh you can see uh with it in my fist in a hammer grip it, that blade is reaching backward and uh giving you an area here to trap rope or trap you know strong straps or whatever you got to cut through um so it's just a really great design uh, for utility, but also to me just looks very cool. Uh, and that's a part of it. Admit it. It's a part of it. And then, and then if I'm holding it like this, you also on a thrust with this, have it on a uh, more, more aligned without having to tweak the wrist because of that sort of pistol grip orientation. So if you were, if you needed to thrust this into something, um, you wouldn't have to can't your wrist too much. Whoops. I just jacked up my, uh, camera here uh, okay next a penultimate design here is the uh is the ornetta from best tech and uh my good buddy kombu uh he's a polish designer and man uh, gregor grebarski is his name and he goes by kombu and he does these exotic sculpted um knives usually sculpted in titanium and now they're doing a lot of them in g10 this is one of the g10 versions the ornetta was the first design he did with best tech he designs exclusively for best tech which i think is pretty cool that's a nice gig and they allow him creative freedom to make knives like this and way more exotic looking uh but they are useful and comfortable this one my god the ergonomics on this are just dreamy they it really melts in the hand and um you've got sort of a, a thick uh, thick handle here uh with the with the ergonomic scoops and, and valleys and swales and then when you feel this in the titanium version whoa so it's that's the premium version it's it's even more contoured in the side to side and it just really feels like a part of your hand it's pretty incredible um this version of it is $60. You can have the $280 uh, titanium version, which is, I swear, man, it is so luxe. It is so nice. Uh, when Best Tech sent me this, thank you, Best Tech, uh, they also sent me the titanium version to check out. And um, man, it was so nice. I did I did do a video of that. You can check that out. But uh, so for 60 bucks, you can get this incredible high design. I mean, this is high concept design. You got a fuller there, by the way. Uh, and and wonderful to use. It's not just a cool looker, but it's great to use. And you can get it for under a hundred bucks. And that's what all of these knives um, can get you. And that's what you can get them for. This last one, I've been talking about quite a bit recently, and I showed you the titanium version, but this one shocks at 30 bucks. This is shocking to me. Um, I'm not even going to speculate how they do that. I think it's obvious, but uh, the, the, this is made in China. That's how it's obvious. But this is a $30 knife, 14C28N Sandvik steel. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. So you have a premium maker designer uh, designing stuff that you can get for either $150 with the premium materials here um, in titanium and S35VN or right here for 30 bucks. Now this is a, I, I forgot to mention earlier, the Night Horse overall is a, a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive. So if you want this knife, you gotta go to Smoky Mountain Knife Works. 
for the G10, beautifully sculpted G10 and very nice quality G10. Uh, it is, uh, it comes in this sand, you know, desert, desert tan, olive drab or black. And then in the titanium versions, it comes in bronze, the regular raw titanium look or a, a, a thunderhead blue kind of thing. Uh, as you can see here, this tip is not as pointy as the other one. I did drop this. This comes with an extremely acute tip. I was fussing around with it. It dropped and um, it went through uh, two layers of, uh, it went through one layer of thick carpet and a thick carpet mat and just stabbed right through all that and hit the concrete floor uh, in my basement and <laughs> bent, bent over like that. So I just snipped it off. I didn't snip it off. I just broke it off and resharpened it. It's getting there. Uh, I'll, I'll keep getting at it, but I don't, I don't need it too sharp. Anyway, very, you like a large knife. This is a, this is a four and a quarter inch blade for 30 bucks. I mean, it's, it's, it's even less expensive than, than, um, say the, the Luzon, uh, the, the inexpensive cold steel XL. This is, but it's on buttery, buttery, buttery action. And, uh, man, it's awesome. Deep carry pocket clip and all the rest. So I do highly, highly recommend it. If you haven't guessed yet, uh, be a pit, be a part of folding knife history and get your modern Navaja. Um, all right. That was corny top design, bottom dollar. Thank you for joining me. Let me know what you think are some of the best designs, most sophisticated designs for the lowest cost. Let people know in the comments below because people do read the comments and they get tips and clues from all of you. So please do that. Thank you so much for joining me again on this uh, Wednesday supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie podcast. Do check in with us tomorrow night, Thursday night knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then join us on Sunday for an awesome knife conversation. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.